Hello class, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this one is trigonometry. Uh, it is the second unit and it is all about Sokotoa, which I know that you are familiar with. So throughout this lesson, we are going to uh, kind of remind ourselves how to use those different ratios. Uh, and then in the next few uh, lessons, we're going to get into some problems, some word problems, and then they will get more complicated using multiple triangles. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, go to the second page of our booklet. We'll talk about some of the basics just as a reminder. So trigonometry is the study of the relationships between the sides and angles of triangles. Um, so the basics. We draw triangles and we label them in a specific way. So this is one triangle that is on the, the left on your page. Um, we use uppercase letters for the corners and we use lowercase letters for the sides. Now, the side that is opposite the corner gets the same letter. So if we put A up top here, we would put a lowercase A on the side that is opposite to it. Uh, if this is angle B, then this is side B. And if this is angle C, then this over here is side C. It works the same no matter how you're labeling it uh, or what the kind of triangle is. So this is a right angle triangle. And it is, um, we're going to label it with P, Q, R. So if P goes up top, then a P has to go on the opposite side, the side that the corner is not made of. Uh, Q, this would be side Q. And then we have corner R which would make this side R. Um, we often denote angles that we're interested in. Um, so we label angles theta, beta, gamma, alpha. So theta looks like that. Beta looks like that. It's like a B with a line underneath it. Um, alpha is this one. And I'll never use gamma because we're only going to talk about triangles and there's only three angles in a triangle. Uh, so we can also label sides according to an angle of interest uh, if it is a 90 degree triangle. So uh, if we have a triangle that is 90 degrees, that square in the corner means that that is a 90 degree angle. Uh, the hypotenuse is always across um, from that um, right angle. The other two sides we will come to find out uh, depend on you know what we're interested in at the time. But essentially the opposite side is across from the angle that we've chosen to work with and the adjacent side uh, is touching the angle that you've chosen to work with but is not the hypotenuse. Let's do a label these two um, triangles according to that logic there. So uh, if we have a right angle triangle and we're going to say that this is our angle of interest over here. This is theta. Uh, the, the side that's across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. The angle or the side, pardon me, that is opposite the angle of interest. So across from the angle of interest is going to be known as the opposite. And the side that's touching the angle, but not the hypotenuse, is the adjacent side. Uh, if we're interested in a different angle, so the same triangle, but instead we're going to be interested in that angle, the top angle instead of the bottom angle. Well, this side is still the hypotenuse. It is still across from the right angle. But the opposite and adjacent sides will change. So the side that is opposite the angle that it is not touching, that is known as the opposite side. And the side that it is touching is the adjacent side. So you can see that these sides have switched depending on what angle we're interested in, which means that for every single triangle, you're going to need to label these sides and understand how to uh, find what they are from your angle of interest. 
So, some things that I know you're familiar with. Um, the three primary trigonometric ratios of acute angles uh, in a right triangle. So, uh, there are actually a few more uh, that we can work with, but that is until a little bit later in your math career. Um, but we'll talk about sine, which is so, cos, which is a, uh, ka, and tan, which is toa. So sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Uh, cos is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And tan is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now these are just ratios and depending on the ratio of the two different sides we can determine what the angle uh, that we're interested is um, interested in is so there are a couple of steps uh, that we have so the triangle or, or a couple of rules sorry the triangle must have 90 degree angle uh, we're going to select one of the other two angles to solve the problem uh, we're going to identify the sides and then we are going to select the trig ratio, sine, cos, or tan, that can be used to solve the problem. Let's jump right into some examples, uh, because I know that this is kind of review. So, um, determining side lengths. We have a triangle, and it has a 12 centimeter long side across from the right angle, and it has 50 degrees for the angle of interest. So from the angle of interest, I'm gonna label my sides. The angle that we're given is that angle of interest. This is gonna be the opposite side, and this is always the hypotenuse. The opposite side is across from our angle, hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Now, if we're using opposite and hypotenuse, we pick one of these three ratios that has opposite and hypotenuse in it. that one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we are going to write out that formula. Sine of theta, so it's the sine of that angle, theta that we're interested in, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Um, let's plug in our numbers. Sine of 50 is equal to x over 12. So x is the opposite side that I want to know. So I need to rearrange this to get it on uh, the get the 12 on the other side and the x all by itself. So if I multiply both sides by 12, then they cancel out over here, and it's added to that side. It gives me something like this: 12 times the sine of 50 is equal to x. Now, sine of 50 is just something that you can punch into your calculator. Just 50 sine. Um, multiply that by 12 to get the side length opposite of the angle of interest uh, found to be 9.2 centimeters. That is the side length um, for that side. Let's do the same thing uh, for the problem that's right beside it. Um, so we are given uh, a triangle uh, where we have an angle of interest of 68 and the x is the opposite side, and 8 is the adjacent side. Let's draw it out real quick. We have a triangle. We have an angle of interest here of 68. And it tells us that this side is 8 inches and this side is x. So opposite of our angle of interest is here. Adjacent to our angle of interest is here. So those are the two that we are going to need to find a ratio that uses. And that would be tan. So we go tan of 68 is equal to opposite is x over adjacent, which is 8. Therefore, we need to multiply both sides by 8. So x is equal to 8 times the tan of 68. Punch that into your calculator find you go 68 tan multiplied by 8 we get 19.8 inches so it, the hardest part is labeling your sides and determining what formula to use after that it's just moving one thing or two things across the equal sign 
um, using algebra. We've got a few more examples, and then uh, there's an exit slip for you to do, and some work. So let's scroll down. So some more examples. This time uh, we are interested in um, another side length. Oh, we're the side length of the denominator. So there's a little bit more uh, algebra involved, a little bit more moving around of the equation. Let's give it a go. So we're given a triangle, right angle down here. We're given an angle of interest of 70 degrees and a side length of six meters and we're interested in this side over here and I should have left more space, but that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to label my sides based on the angle of interest. So this is the hypotenuse. This would be opposite and this would be adjacent. So I've got and I'm interested in the opposite and adjacent sides. So that would be tan. So let's write that out. We've got tan of 70 is equal to opposite, which is six over adjacent, which we call n. So in this case, the denominator is the unknown. So what we always do in this case is we need to multiply by n to get it onto this side on the top and then divide by 10 of 70 to get rid of it on this side and get it to the bottom. And what that really ends up being, a cool trick, is that we simply switch these two values. There is no need to show a whole bunch of steps Whenever the unknown is in the denominator, whenever the unknown is in the denominator, you're just going to switch those positions. And it becomes n is equal to 6 divided by tan of 70. So it's really easy. You just flip when the denominator is the unknown, you just flip it so that the tan uh, uh, or the, the ratio is underneath. Um, we can then just do that in our calculator, six divided by 10 of 70, which ends up being 2.2 .2 meters. We can do the same thing for this next triangle. Let's draw it out. We have a triangle that looks something like this with a right angle here. That's 17 degrees for an angle of interest and 28 feet for this side, we want to know what the hypotenuse is. I say it's the hypotenuse right away because it's the longest side and it's across from the right angle. Boom, hypotenuse. From our angle of interest, uh, we can label the other sides. This is the opposite and this is adjacent. I'm not really interested in the opposite, we're just interested in these two. So we're going to find a ratio that uses adjacent and hypotenuse. That would be Ah, oh, cos. So cos of 17 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 28 over x. Hmm. Again, our unknown is in the denominator. So we are going to pull our trick. We are going to switch them. And we are going to come up with x is equal to cos of 17. Pardon me. x is equal to 28 divided by cos of 17. It's very important that we just like double check our work. Um, something doesn't seem right. Um, definitely just go back one step. I was like, oh, not sure if that's quite right. Let's check it out. It wasn't. So I wrote 28 on top. So x is equal to 28 over cos of 17. Um, into your calculator that goes. Um, so x is equal to 29.3 feet. That's our final answer. That is the side that we are interested in and how long it is. Uh, the last thing that we're going to do in this lesson is we are going to use these tan, sine, and cos ratios to determine what the angles are. So let's jump into that, and then it'll be your time to work. So, let's see. We have a triangle given. I would just like to draw it out so that I can label the sides for you guys. So we have a right angle down at this corner. And we have our angle of interest labeled as theta here. And a side of 36 and a side of 53. So we have no angle. We only have two sides. 
So we still have an angle of interest, the one that we want to know, so we can still label them correctly according to that angle. So um, the longest side across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. We then have the opposite side and the adjacent side. The one that is touching it, but not the hypotenuse is the adjacent side. So we have opposite and adjacent, and that is tan. So tan of theta is equal to opposite, which is 36, over adjacent, which is 53. Now, we could punch this into our calculator and get a decimal, but that doesn't get us the angle, right? A decimal is too small. We will probably want something that is, we would definitely want something that is between zero and 90 in this case, because it is an acute angle. It is definitely less than 90 and it exists, so it's more than zero. Um, how do we do that? Well, we take the inverse tan, and it is usually the second function uh, in on your calculator under the tan button. But if you take the inverse tan uh, of both sides, we will find out what theta is. So uh, inverse tan, inverse tan, these kind of get rid of each other, and we're left with theta is equal to the tan inverse of 36 over 53. Now you can punch that in to make it a, um, a decimal. Just keep all of your decimals, as many as you can in your calculator, uh, and then tan inverse that. So that comes out theta being 34.2 degrees. So I'll punch this into my calculator here uh, to try to show you. If we go 36, hmm, this up. there we go calculator here. If we go 36 divided by 53 and hit equals, that'll get us a number. We are then going to second function and tan inverse that to get 34.1 or 34.2 when I rounded from the 8. Um, so it is just that simple. Some calculators may require you to go second function, tan inverse, and then punch in the values. Uh, that is not how this one works, but sometimes it is opposite. Let's move on to the last problem uh, of this section. Uh, we are given a triangle here. A right angle triangle. Angle of interest is down on the bottom corner again. Uh, we have a 9 meter side and a 12 meter side. Sorry about the M's. They're not very easy to read. Um, let's label our sides. So across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse. Across from the angle of interest is always the opposite. And touching but not the hypotenuse is the adjacent angle. So the two sides that we have, opposite and hypotenuse, we have nothing to do with the adjacent side. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So sine theta is equal to nine for opposite over 12 for hypotenuse. Now, we can do the same thing that we did for tan. It's a sine inverse. So we're left with theta is equal to the sine inverse of nine divided by 12. I'll show you again how to punch that into my calculator. So we have nine divided by 12 equals, then we're going to inverse sine. So that is, you can see there's sine and then there's a little one up there on the second function. That's what we do. We get 48.6 degrees. So that's everything um, that we have for this lesson. Um, next one will be uh, a little bit more complicated. Hopefully this was a little bit of a review. If not, feel free to send me any questions uh, and definitely work hard on the questions that are given um, in your booklet. But I'll see you next time.